I'm Jim McKay speaking to you from Lake Washington in Seattle where this afternoon 12 of the fastest power boats in all the world are going to be going at speeds of well up to 150 miles an hour. They'll all be in pursuit of the most prized prize in all of power boat racing, the Gold Cup. Stand by and you'll see it all this afternoon on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. You're looking down right now on the highest point in Seattle, Washington. The Space Needle, the symbol of the Seattle World's Fair, rising high above the rest of the city. Seattle has fallen in love with this World's Fair. As a matter of fact, more than 50,000 people a day have been visiting it. It's a great success. And yet, this is a city with a much older love affair than even its World's Fair. This city is in love with the sport of powerboat racing. And almost unbelievably today, the focus of interest is not the World's Fair, it's this stretch of water, Lake Washington, where more than a quarter of a million people are gathered around its perimeter and on its surface to watch the classic of all powerboat racing, the Gold Cup. We are told that in boats gathered along that long boom there, alone, there are more than 11,000 people. I'm Jim McKay, and this afternoon I'll be covering the human side of the story down here in the pit. This is one of two basic locations from which the sound portion of the program will be coming. I'll be talking to the drivers, to the mechanics, and to the people who make these tremendous machines do the things they do out on the surface of Lake Washington. And by the way, during the course of the uh, afternoon, you'll also be hearing comments of the favorite in this race, Bill Muncy, in a conversation I had with him about racing, racers, and life. Standing by in our other position, ready to do the actual call of the race, is our colleague Bill Fleming on the barge. Bill? Thank you, Jim McKay, and hello once again, everybody. Welcome to the greatest spectacle in boat racing, the Gold Cup race of 1962 here on Lake Washington. This race will be run for 10 laps in each heat. There are a total of five heats, and uh, each of the laps is three miles long. That means that one boat will have to run a total of 90 miles during the course of the afternoon. Uh, bring you up to date on the point totals as the afternoon goes on. Right now, though, we'd like you to see close up these finest boat drivers in the world here at the Gold Cup. Okay, Bill, here, for example, is Don Wilson, a red-headed man in a gleaming silver suit, an experimental suit, by the way. It's supposed to be completely fireproof. He'll be driving Miss US-1, the fastest boat on the straightaway in the world. It set a record not long ago. And this is Bill Muncy, the favorite in the race at the wheel of Miss Century 21. She used to be called Miss Thriftway, but now she's named after the World's Fair. Bill Muncy, I think you'll find one of the most articulate and interesting sportsmen we have yet met on ABC's Wide World of Sports. And you'll be hearing a good deal of his thoughts later on. This is National Guard Major Dallas Sarks, Air National Guardsman, driving Miss Seattle 2, one of the veteran boats in this competition. He's a veteran driver also, and a skillful one. Wild Bill Cantrell, they called this fella, when he drove automobiles at Indianapolis. He's now a veteran and one of the most famous of all the hydroplane drivers. He'll be driving Gale 5. This fella's name is Bob Gillian, driving a boat kind of a dream. It's called Fascination, doesn't have too much of a chance, but a labor of love. And this is Colonel Rush Lay of the United States Air Force, at the wheel of Tahoe Miss, a fine boat that used to be called Maverick. We'll be seeing these men in action in just a moment at the start of the Gold Cup Powerboat Race on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now here's a word about Camel Cigarettes from James Daly. All six boats in this Heat 1A are now on the water and running. And here they are, Gale 5, driven by Bill Cantrell, the 54-year-old bachelor from Detroit. Miss Seattle 2, driven by Major Dallas Sartz of Spokane, Washington. Boat owned by Milo and Glenn Stone of Seattle. The Miss Bardall, owned by Oli Bardall of Seattle, driven by Ron Musson. The Notre Dame, the brand new boat from Detroit, owned by Shirley Mendelson McDonald, and driven by Colonel Warner Gardner, a jet bomber pilot in Detroit. And there you see our blimp camera showing you the fleet as they will take the one minute bomb in just about 15 seconds. Miss Madison, the community owned boat, 
who has really 10,000 owners. From Madison, Indiana, and there's the one-minute bomb. This boat will be driven by 60-year-old Marion Cooper of Louisville, Kentucky. And the sixth boat in this first heat is the Fascination, driven by Bob Gilliam of Seattle. They have one minute until the start of the race. That is the one-minute bomb, and that means that they are now looking at the starting clock that has started to black out. It's all orange when they see it, and as soon as the one-minute bomb goes off, it starts to black out, and there you see it. With about 25 seconds to go, the fascination, the Gale 5, the Seattle 2, the Bardo, the Notre Dame, the Miss Madison, and here they come. Nobody can cross that starting line before that clock is completely blacked out. If he does, he has to go another lap. Ten laps. 30 miles, heat 1A of the 1962 Gold Cup. The Notre Dame on the inside, the Gale 5 next to him. The Bardo coming up fast. It's going to be a beautiful start. It's a beauty. And the Madison takes the lead with the Seattle 2 on the outside. And getting a very slow start is the fascination. Notre Dame having a little trouble, but streaking into that first turn will be the Gale 5 on the Bardo with Miss Seattle on the outside. A beautiful start it was, and you can see now. Uh oh, troubles! Did you see that? A boat absolutely disintegrated down in the turn down there. You saw it go, and you can see the styrofoam all over the water. Miss Seattle 2 is the boat that at least got crosswise and spun, and it looked like she just simply disintegrated. You saw some floating debris in the water. And now the Coast Guard cutter is over there, and they are lifting the driver of the boat into the helicopter hovering right above. So the driver has been plucked out of the water. Boy, shades of years ago. Remember when Bill Muncy got fished out in 58, wasn't it? And the helicopter sped him on his way to the hospital. Fortunately, he was not hurt seriously. That's when he hit the uh, Coast Guard cutter. I did see the helmet there in the cutter of Dallas Sartz of Spokane, the major in the Air Force, who is a test pilot. And uh, we hope, of course, that his health is still good. And it was quite a tumble he took. As you saw, Miss Seattle 2 on the outside apparently got into some rough water or something. But whatever it was, the boat simply disintegrated. We couldn't see anything bigger than a, let's say, a three-foot square piece of part in the entire area. I have a hospital report on the condition of Major Dallas Sartz, whose boat disintegrated on him, Miss Seattle 2. Uh, he is conscious, he has no head injuries, and other than a broken upper left leg, he seems to be in good condition. And that, of course, is good news to us, considering the seriousness of the accident and the way it looked. The boat, well, I'm afraid it's in about 70 feet of water at the bottom of Lake Washington right now, and Miss Seattle 2 is definitely out of this Gold Cup for 62. All six boats are on the course now for Heat 1B. And here's the way they all line up. We have Mid-Century 21, who won the Gold Cup a year ago and the national champion for the last two years. The boat to beat the top qualifying speed of 116.212 miles per hour, driven by Bill Muncie. The Tempest, driven by Chuck Hickling of Seattle, Washington, qualifying at 111.417, the fourth uh, fastest qualifier. The Tahoe Miss, the former Miss Reno and the former Maverick, Driven by Colonel Rush Schley, qualified at 110.731. Miss U.S., driven by Don Wilson. This is the boat that's owned by George Simon of Detroit, holds the world's mile record for propeller-driven craft over the straightaway of 200.419 miles per hour. And before that clock is completely blacked out. If he does, he has to go another lap. All six of them charging down here. Here comes the Tahoe Miss on the inside with such crush. And on the outside is Muncie. Bill Muncie coming up. And Muncie In the middle of that group of three is the such crust. Almost uh, washed down in the wake of Muncie. And it looks like Freddie Aller's having a whale of a time trying to keep that boat from uh, drinking a lot of water and Bill Muncie's rooster tail. The Tahoe Miss was the first boat to edge across the starting line, but Muncie came on strong, and Muncie has the lead as they go around the first turn. Tahoe Miss on the inside, and Bill Muncie in the orange and white Miss Century 21 has the lead. And out she comes. There's the spot she wanted to be. She's running in a heat with two much heavier boats, the Sutch Crust and the Gale 7. 
She wants to stay out of her way, or their way. So it's Bill Muncy in the Century 21 has the lead. Tahoe Miss with Rush uh, Schley in the cockpit. Is in second place. In third place, looks like the Tempest. The Tempest is in third place. Fourth place is Such Crust. The fourth. And in fifth place, Miss U.S. followed by the Gale 7. So that's the way they're strung out here on this first of 10 laps. Heat 1B. Heat 1A, we might mention, has to be restarted because of the accident on the very first lap. Oh, did he come close to that buoy. Bill Muncy almost missed the exit buoy on the first turn. Woo! Boy, that's really cutting it close. Shuddering through those turns as Bill Muncy goes into the turn and gets ready to come out of the number two turn. A flare went out on the far side and Bill Muncy, you're looking at right now, is going to be coming down into that area. The Tempest is in the water, but the driver, oh, he's got fire. That's the reason for it. The boat, the Tempest is on fire right now. You see the flames looking up from up on the bow, and the flare went up immediately. Now they are lowering the basket down to the driver, and Chuck Killing is getting in the basket, and they are now putting the red flares out on the course, and there he goes, up to safety. Oh, these fellows in the Coast Guard helicopters do a tremendous job. This uh, heat has officially been stopped. We might mention here that whenever there is a red flare on the course, the boats must come in. It is not declared an official heat, and they will have to rerun it. There goes uh, Bill Muncy uh, circling back, and he's going to try to douse her down again. He didn't quite get close enough. And now Freddie Alder has switched the such crust around, and that big twin-engine job is going to go around. And look at the water go in there. Away, 2A lines up, and it should be a dandy. Miss Century 21 with 400 points, and Miss Bardall with 400 both of those uh, winners in the Heat 2A, and both second place finishers, the Such Cross and Miss Madison, are in 2A. The Gale, seven in there also. So this should be a dandy one, and it could be a very significant one as to the eventual outcome of this 62 Gold Cup race. Now we are about 35 seconds away from the start of the race. The butt of the watch, of course, is Bill Muncy because he's going to be battling to get his nose right on that line so he doesn't have to stay in the wake of those big, powerful boats that are in this particular heat with him. Bill Muncy is now second from the inside. Suchcrust is on the inside. The Bardall is next to Muncy, three from the inside. Here they come. They're going to have to slow up a little bit. They've got about 10 seconds. Here's Muncy uh, creeping up on him. And there goes Miss Madison shooting by on the outside, but it's be careful. Bill Muncy has shot into the 
the lead on the inside. Muncie has taken the lead as Miss Madison came up a little bit too quickly. And at that last moment, Marion Cooper had to back off for a second before he got the go-ahead gun. So Bill Muncie has the lead. Here's Bill Muncie coming around the turn at the north end of the course. This is heat 2A, and Bill Muncie is tied for the lead right now. With the Bardall, each has 400 points. Here comes that Rolls-powered Century 21, designed by Ted Jones in 59. Washington, the marvelous natural amphitheater for the greatest spectacle in boat racing, the Gold Cup Classic. And we have just received word it was a legal start for all the boats. So they all will take the 10 laps, three miles a lap, or 30 miles. Bill Muncy increasing his lead now over Ron Musson in the Miss Bardall. In third place is Jack Schaefer's twin engine such crust. Well, there's been no change since the very start of this heat, 2A, the Century 21, Bardall and Touchcrust running 1, 2, 3 right from the very start. And this is the end of the eighth lap for Bill Muncie. As that beautiful orange and white hydroplane is in five. in terms of 100, 103 miles an hour as being slow. Do you realize the first year of the Gold Cup was 1904 and the boat standard averaged 23.6 miles an hour? Now they are averaging better than 100 miles an hour. Averaging better than 100. In the background, you see some of the boats from the United States Navy. And uh, I think if we uh, see here, you'll see one of the submarines. There it is right behind as Bill Muncie goes through that turn. That's the north turn, and beyond is the floating bridge. And you can see the traffic going by. People slow down a little bit to watch the greatest spectacle of boat racing. The Gold Cup Championship on Lake Washington. And look at Bill Muncie bounce through that turn. The checkered flag is up for him. And as he comes down, the checkered flag for first place in heat 2A. Oh, she's running like a top. 400 points for Bill Muncy. And he is going to be mighty tough to beat. As we've traveled the wide world of sport, we've met some very interesting sportsmen. People like the auto racers, Bill Hill and Sterling Moss, golfer Arnold Palmer, the Russian high jumper, Valerie Brumel, many of the others whom we've met face to face. Now you're going to meet, I think, one of the most interesting and articulate of them all. You're going to see him quite close up. Just before the next heat begins, let's talk to Bill Muncy. I understand, Bill, also, that you've been in 17 Gold Cup heats, and you finished 16. Gee, That's I haven't... Pretty good record. Stop dating me. I'm bald enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have had an excellent consistency yeah. performance. We've had... Uh, we've finished every Gold Cup we've started. Uh, we've won three out of uh, five and we ran second and third in the other two. Okay, but how about this, the mental and emotional aspect of this? You ever get scared out there? Oh, no. No, uh, I've never been scared. I don't think really any real professional campaigner in anything really gets scared. You do develop a tremendous respect for equipment. I know that this uh, boat could seriously injure me or could seriously injure anybody else on the race course. I know it's capable of fantastic speed. I know that it's the finest machine that is, can be placed in the water because my crew is that tight, so wouldn't put me in it unless it were uh, a fine machine to run. 
but uh, I, I'm never frightened, and I know that the boat is capable of running as long as uh, uh, there aren't any extenuating circumstances anywhere on the race course. I mean, we die checked and magnaflux and x-rayed that rudder, yet it blew off. Well, how are you going to know? You, you can't do any more than we did, and we did lose it. I didn't lose confidence in my crew chief and blame him, come back and pound him on the head. It was, my golly, you'd think that I was his son. He felt awful about it. And, uh, of course, my wife was uh, concerned about it. What does your wife think about this? Well, I was racing when we met. Uh, we met in Florida, and uh, uh, I've been racing ever since. And <laughs> I think that we both hope that we can get out of racing someday, but we enjoy it. And uh, we enjoy the glamour of it, and we enjoy the, uh, oh, in our own little community here, it, uh, we enjoy the notoriety. That's fun. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. If racing is fun. Uh, we like it very much. It's kind of hard to pin, pin down the answer to the question, why do you do it? Why do you race? Yeah, there's the biggest boat I, I don't in the know. world. I, golly, I, I can't answer that question. Uh, uh, I like racing. I like competition. I like to see if I can go out and beat somebody else at something. I'll tell you, I'm a lousy loser. I'm just the world, <laughs> a terrible loser. I, I, my boss always said, try and be a good sport. But go ahead and be a poor loser if you want. <laughs> because maybe I'll come back stronger the next time. And uh, we're not going to win every race, uh, ever. We're coming pretty close to it. Later. But we'll we'll run in the money every time, and we'll put on a good performance, which is the most important part of the whole thing, I think. You can't hear another boat behind you. Definitely not. You can't hear anything. Uh, in fact, you really don't hear your own boat. And as I mentioned before, it's amazing how you suddenly become engulfed yeah. in a vacuum when yeah. this race starts. You, you're not aware of the wind against your face, or you're. And at 160, it's, it's uh, formal, you know. Uh, you, not, you can't hear the noise. Uh, you don't have any sensation of speed. You can tell how fast you're going because we have a water speed indicator. But uh, you just become so much a part of the machine, so much a part of this m working mechanism that... Uh, you, you ever see the crowd on the beach? You ever think about them? Oh, no. Never. They're not there at all. No, you, you don't see anybody. And uh, I see very few of the boys. The only ones I'm interested in are the entrance pins to each corner. Yeah. In the corner, of course, you see them well, but I, I don't use the boys on the course so much as, uh, as much as many, uh, many of the other drivers do. One final thing, Bill. Let's say it's the last lap. You're well out in front. Looks like all you got to do is chauffeur around there. Can you describe that feeling? Oh, it's marvelous. It's just a marvelous thing. Uh, and can you see the crowd? You see them waving there on the shore? After the race is over, you do. Yeah. But uh, with some races, the feeling is greater than with other races. Hey, Bill, maybe you just answered that question you had a little difficulty with a while ago when I asked you, why do you race big boats? Maybe that's the reason. Maybe it is. It's a marvelous feeling to win. Thanks very much, Bill. Thanks, you. Here are the six boats that will go in the final heat. These are the ones who have scored the most points this afternoon. Miss Century 21 with two 400s for a total of eight. Miss Bardo with 700 points. Miss U.S. with 625. The Such Crust and Notre Dame tied with 525 each. And the Miss Madison with 469 points. So this is the big one, the final heat. And we'll be underway in just a couple of moments. So here they come. With the about 18 seconds to go. Now about 15, a little less. There's the blackout clock in the right-hand corner, and here they come with such crust on the inside. Notre Dame moves up fast, and this on the outside. Miss Madison on the outside, coming fast, and she may have gotten her nose over just a little bit too soon. We'll have to wait and see, but there you see the five boats going down. The Miss U.S. is out of your picture right now. She is the last boat and it slowed down considerably. Here they go around the first turn and Bill Muncy has the lead. Bill Muncy in this century 21 has the lead. The Bardal is in second place, in third place is Miss Madison, and Such Crust is fourth. Bill Muncy taking over the lead as he has done in each one of the heats that he has gone in this afternoon, has taken over the lead, at least by the end of the back stretch, and he now holds the command lead, and Notre Dame and the Bardal fight for second place. The Notre Dame on the inside with a green shamrock on the tail fin. Taking over second place. And the Bardol is on the outside. Notre Dame coming into this final heat in a fifth place position with 525 points. 
but she is doing a pretty good job of following right on the tail of the 21. Notre Dame, you saw there going into the third. She got a third in the first heat, and she limped around to finish in the two-boat race, and so got 300 points in the second heat. For the Century 21, turning in a very fast first lap, 109.09 miles per hour. So Miss Century 21 starting to lengthen her lead now over the Notre Dame. Notre Dame clearly has second place over the Bardall. Second place is worth $6,000 in the Gold Cup Championship of 1962. So it's a very important spot. All six boats still running, although the Miss U.S. is way back at the end of the... Number two turn, just about ready to come into the backstretch. So she's a good deal behind the leader, Miss Century 21, whom you see right now, skittering around that turn, getting ready to come down to finish the second lap. Incidentally, the crowd here today estimated at 250,000 fans. Here's Bill Lindsay going by with two laps to go. And that boat just purring like a panther out there. Never skips a beat. A remarkable combination. Truly perfection in hydroplane racing. A perfect boat, fine crew, and who is considered to be the finest hydroplane driver of all time in the unlimited class, Bill Muncy. ABC Sports Schedule changes starting the weekend of September the 8th and 9th. ABC's Wide World of Sports, now seen on Sundays, moved to Saturday afternoons, the same time, beginning September the 8th. And exciting American Football League games will come your way starting on Sunday, September the 9th, over ABC TV, number one network for sports. All that boat has to do is go dead in the water, and he doesn't get a thing. And any one of these other boats is very capable of overtaking him in total points. So Bill is playing it very cautiously right now. three miles in racing. There's the green flag. And the Notre Dame and the Bardol are in that order for second and third respectively. So let's follow our leader and let's say still champion around the course. This is the boat that won the Gold Cup Championship in 61. It won the National Championship for the last two years. It has won the last five heats of unlimited competition that it's been in. It has finished 45 consecutive heats of unlimited competition. This would be its 46. A truly remarkable record for a remarkable combination of both crew and driver. Well, Bill Muncy is getting ready to take the final turn up at the north end of the course. The fifth place boat still running, Miss Madison, and in sixth place is Miss U.S. Bill Muncy halfway through the turn, and the checkered flag will be out in just a moment. As soon as he hits that exit buoy, Bill will come by. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he swung a little bit wide. just a little bit wide to give everybody sort of a hello. It's kind of a tradition here at the Gold Cup. He comes by. The checkered flag is out. And he salutes. The gun goes off and Muncie salutes to the crowd and to the official barge and there is the Gold Cup champion for 1962 just as he was for 1961. Bill Muncie in the Miss Century 21 and of course it gives the people of the Pacific Northwest a great thrill to have this century 21 come through with the Gold Cup Championship simply because this is the year of their World's Fair in Seattle, and it means a great deal to them. Well, it's been a long afternoon here in Seattle, Washington, for the 62 Gold Cup. As a matter of fact, darkness has just about fallen, but here's the way it has happened. Bill Munsey is the man of the hour, 400, 400, 400. You can't do him any better than that, 1,200 total points for first place in the Gold Cup Championship for the second year in a row. Ron Musson driving the Miss Bardall in second place. 
Incidentally, uh, Muncie picks up $11,000 for his victory, and uh, Musson picks up $6,000 for second place. The Notre Dame, a surprising third place today. Surprising because it's the first time the Notre Dame has been in Gold Cup competition, and the first Gold Cup race for Warner Gardner, the Army Lieutenant Colonel who drove here today to third place and picked up $3,500 in prize money. Miss U.S. in fourth place with 752 points and $2,000 in prize. Such crust the fourth in fifth with 694 and $1,000. And in sixth place, Miss Madison getting six, uh, 469 points. You'll see the zero here in the final heat. She was disqualified because she did hit a buoy, and that's the reason uh, she got the 469. It didn't make any real difference in the final point standings. So that's just about the story, statistically speaking, but there is the emotional side, too. And for that, let's go down to the pit area and meet the winner, Bill Muncy, with Jim McKay. Jim? You think we did all right for in the left department? Work, worked out so Congratulations. Well. It's been a Thank long you. time. The first heat was scheduled for 12.40. It is now after 8 o'clock at night. It's almost pitch dark. Was it worth it all? It was worth it. It is worth it to win. As I told you, I, I think I continue racing because it's a, it's a marvelous feeling to win. <laughs> Once upon a time, you were quoted as saying when you won five, you were going to quit. You've won four now, and you're still a young <laughs> fella. You want to change that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting, I've been in a long time. There's some new men coming along that are doing wonderfully in the... They're getting tired of Muncie, I'm thinking. He's been around too long. How can you sum it up? Here were the greatest and fastest uh, boats in the world out on that water of Lake Washington today, and yet you left them all so far in your wake. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we do have a fine performing piece of machinery. There's no question about it. And the J uh, Jack uh, Ramsey and our crew has it uh, glued together just beautifully. Uh, I didn't miss a beat all day. Even uh, when I took a couple of slugs of water, it continued running beautifully. And uh, when you got a combination uh, between crew and owner and driver that can communicate like we're able to communicate, we're going to be tough to beat. We're not going to win them all now, but uh, we're going to win one or two. We're coming pretty close to it. <laughs> one final question, Bill. At the end of this day, can you answer that question? Why do you race? I don't know. If the same reason. It's a marvelous feeling to hey, win. Do I kit? Is it worth it all to you? Oh, it certainly huh? is. If it is to him, it is to me, What's and it's pretty, nice when you win. <laughs> it was a pretty long sense day, wasn't it? Yes, it certainly was. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, Bill. Good luck, man. Bill Muncy, the winner of the Gold Cup for the second year in a row.